When we think about teams that had a single player carry them to a championship, the only team that initially comes to mind for me is the 2011 Dallas Mavericks with Dirk Nowitzki. But another really weak team with only one superstar that won a championship is the 1994 Houston Rockets with Hakeem Olajuwon. They obviously had the great Hakeem Olajuwon and then Otis Thorpe, Vernon Maxwell and Kenny Smith. And obviously you can't forget as well that they had Robert Horry. Essentially what I'm saying is the only player that really matters on that team is Hakeem Olajuwon and without him that team is absolutely nothing. So for this video I'm just going to take us all the way back to the 1993-94 season and just break down how Hakeem Olajuwon actually led the Rockets to winning this championship. Now, one of the most notable moments in NBA history happened just before the start of this season, and that was Michael Jordan retiring at the age of just 30 and going to play minor league baseball. There is some discussion as to why he retired, but I think it's pretty clear why, and it's because his father, James Jordan, was unfortunately killed during the offseason. And if you're a basketball fan, I'm sure you've all watched The Last Dance, but in the case that you haven't, Michael Jordan was basically just really, really close to his father, and the death of him just made him not want to play basketball anymore. And it was always his father's dream that he would go and play baseball one day, so that's exactly what Michael did. So the Chicago Bulls were far weaker this season as they were missing MJ and it was unlikely they would challenge for the championship. So going into this season, there were many different teams that stood a chance at getting this ring. And on basketball reference, they actually have the odds from all the way back at the start of the season for who would win the ring. The Knicks were the favourite with Patrick Ewing leading the team, then the Phoenix Suns with Charles Barkley who was just coming off an MVP, then the Cavaliers and so on and so forth until at fifth you have the Houston Rockets. But previously, the closest that Hakeem had got to a championship was all the way back in 1986 when it was just his second season in the NBA and he led the Rockets to a finals and faced Larry Bird and the Boston Celtics, which of course they lost. But Hakeem was still very, very young then at 23 and was now on the prime of his career at 31. And Hakeem won the regular season MVP in 1994, so I think it's fair to say that he was at his best. So in the first round, the Rockets faced the Portland Trailblazers, which weren't a bad team with Clyde Drexler, Rod Strickland and Clifford Robinson, but they were beat fairly convincingly by the Rockets. Hakeem showed why he deserved the league MVP with 34 points, 11 rebounds and 3.8 blocks per game. But their second round game was certainly going to be tougher as they faced the Phoenix Suns. And the Suns vs Rockets series actually went to 7 games and was a very, very close series. And for this particular series though, you could argue that Kevin Johnson was the most valuable player for the Suns as he averaged more points and more assists than Charles Barkley, but Hakeem just had another phenomenal series. 29 points, 13 rebounds and 4 blocks a game were his stats during this series. This took them into the West Conference Finals where they faced a very very strong Utah Jazz team of John Stockton and Karl Malone, one of the best duos in the league at the time. But none of that even mattered as they were gentlemen swept by Hakeem and the Rockets. Karl Malone averaged 26 points for the series, but shot extremely poor from the field of 43%, and Stockton averaged 9.4 assists per game, which is still great, but less than his season average of 12.6. Now so far the Rockets have not had an easy road to the finals, but their toughest challenge was still yet to come. To no one's surprise, it was the New York Knicks to make it to the finals, and Patrick Ewing had played great in the playoffs so far. But in terms of this finals matchup of Hakeem vs Ewing, it was clear who got the edge. Ewing had 19 points to Hakeem's 27 and Ewing shot an appalling 36% from the field compared to Hakeem's 50%. But their block and steal numbers were very similar with them both averaging around 4 blocks a game which was very very impressive from both of them. But I think it's important to note that it's never really been a debate if who's better out of Patrick Ewing and Hakeem Olajuwon because it's very clearly Hakeem. But Ewing definitely had more help than Hakeem. Ewing had two All-Stars that season on his team in Charles Oakley and John Starks, who granted weren't the best All-Stars, but All-Stars nonetheless. They were both better players than Hakeem's two best teammates, who were Vernon Maxwell and Otis Thorpe. Thorpe was actually an All-Star two seasons prior to this season, but that was his first and only All-Star appearance. So now the question that I want to address is why don't we hold Hakeem's championship as the same level as we hold Dirk's championship? And first of all, I do want to say that I do have Hakeem better than Dirk on the all-time rankings, but they are two of my favourite plays ever. With that being said, Dirk's trip to the finals in 2011 was undoubtedly tougher. He faced Kobe Bryant and the Lakers in the second round and swept them 4-0. And just so you know, this is the Lakers that won the two previous rings and had now just been swept by Dirk Nowitzki. And then in the second round he faced the OKC with Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook and James Harden, and then gentlemen swept them. 
And just so you know, this was OKC's prime season and it was the last season that the three of these players all played together. But even after those two series, Dirk still hadn't faced his toughest challenge yet. Because in the finals, he was facing the Miami Heat with LeBron James, Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh, or otherwise known as the Miami Super Team. And for me, this team was without a doubt one of the top 10 teams all time, probably even higher, but Dirk Nowitzki didn't even let this series go to seven games. Dirk was so dominant in this playoffs that he took care of them in six games, winning the series 4-2 and winning his first ever championship. And honestly, I don't know the next time we'll see a single player lead a team to a championship just like Dirk Nowitzki did. And then I think another reason why we tend to forget about Hakeem's ring is because he won it this season after Jordan retired. And obviously when we think about 90s basketball, we think about the Chicago Bulls and the six rings that they won there. And personally, if Jordan never retired, I think it's very, very likely he would have won this ring and the ring the year after that Hakeem also won. Now, if that would have happened, the Chicago Bulls would have won an insane eight rings in a row, which just is crazy to think about. But obviously that didn't happen, and what I'm saying is all just speculation. So yeah, this is still a very, very impressive ring for Hakeem, but I do think Dirks is more impressive. And so if you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, because it does really, really help out my channel. And if you want to see more from me, you can always subscribe. And this video I only actually did because it was suggested to me by someone down in the comments, so if you do have a video suggestion, be sure to leave it down in the comments. And well, that's everything covered, so as always, I'll see you in my next video.